first power book, G3, the Kanga, was introduced in November 1997 and was the fastest notebook computer at the time, running at 250 MHz, 10 MHz faster than its predecessor, the 3400C. It had a runtime of five months and was discontinued to make room for the Wall Street. The second generation of PowerBook G3s, now called the PowerBook G3 series, was introduced in March 1998. It was called Wall Street, and it was completely redesigned with a new case that was lighter and more rounded than the previous PowerBook G3. However, it was still an old world ROM Macintosh. Codenamed Wall Street, it came in three screen sizes, a 12-inch passive matrix LCD, a 13.3 TFT LCD, and a 14.1 TFT LCD. It came at three CPU speeds, 233 MHz, 250 MHz, and 292 MHz. The 233 model was sometimes nicknamed Main Street, as it lacked L2 cache, making it far slower than the other two in the lineup. The 250 MHz and the 292 MHz models shipped with a full megabyte of cache. Because of this large cache, as well as the swifter system bus, the Wall Streets were known to suffer some heat issues. Many of the problems of the Wall Street G3s were fixed in the next revision, the Wall Street 2. The same Wall Street design was updated in August 1998, the Wall Street 2, and featured a 14.1 display on all models. Processors were bumped with 233 MHz, 266 MHz, and 300 MHz. The case contained two butt docking bays, one on each side. The left hand could, bay could accommodate a battery a 3.5 floppy disk, a third-party iOmega zip drive, or a third-party add-on hard drive. The right-hand bay was larger and could accommodate all of the above, plus a 5 and one fourth optical drive, CD-ROM or DVD-ROM. A small internal nickel-cadmium battery allowed swapping of the main batteries while the computer slept. With the battery in each bay, battery life was doubled. DVDs could be displayed with the use of a hardware decoder built into a card bus, PCM CIA card. The PowerBook G3 series was Apple's first notebook, offering to match the build-up to order customization of the PowerMac G3 desktop line. Discontinued in May 1999, this would be the last Apple computer ever to use the rainbow-colored Apple logo, and the last Mac to support Apple's SuperDrive. The fourth model, the Lombard, featured a bronze keyboard, which was translucent, it had a 400 megahertz PowerPC G3, it had a DVD, optional DVD player, an ATA optical drive, and it had, it had longer battery life. Mac OS 8.6 through 10.3.9 are supported by Apple, but 10.4 is not. By the use of Expose Factor 4, allows users to upgrade to Tiger, and it runs quite well for an unsupported machine. My model has 512 megabytes, and it has a 20 gigabyte hard drive, and it's got a CPU of 400 megahertz. The last model, known as the Pismo, was named after the city of Pismo Beach, California. The original Pismo was rumored to be a latchless design akin to the iBook, which is similar in specification. Apple settled on fitting the Pismo board into the form factor of the previous Lumber G3 PowerBook, but with many improvements. The Pismo was available at CPU clock of 400, 500, with a frontside bus of 100 MHz, one-third swifter than the Lumber's frontside bus. It also implemented a unified motherboard architecture and replaced SCSI with the newer FireWire interface. The PCI graphics used on the Lombard were updated to an AGP-connected RAGE Mobility 128, though the video memory was kept at 8 megabytes and the screen res resolution was the same as well. A 2x DVD-ROM drive became standard for both speed grades. It was also the first PowerBook with airport networking as an official option, although it could be added to the earlier models via various third-party card bus PCM CIA cards. The Pismo can be upgraded with additional RAM, officially 512 megabytes, with then available RAM, but it accepts one gigabyte, a larger hard drive up to 120 gigabytes. Writer screens and replacement batteries are also available. My Lombard, along with the Pismo, 
is 1.7 inches high and 12.7 inches wide and weighs in at 6.1 pounds. And what in the world would Apple be like if it didn't have that glowing logo? The Lombard comes with an audio out, an audio in, two USB 1.0 ports, an Ethernet port, two Firewire 400s, an S-Video, a VGA, and a standard modem, a Kensington lock, and a power supply. So really, in conclusion, the Lombard is still pretty nice by today's standards. Mine is a little odd though, mainly because when I boot it up, it says extensions off. And it won't allow me to open QuickTime and even some of the control panels. And when I lo open up the extension manager, it says all the extensions are uh, on. So that's a mystery. So what I did was I ordered a new uh, OS 9 disk. Um, it's got Airport, which I'm currently using right now, I guess. Can't really see that taskbar down there. Usually I have Ethernet. I don't have it plugged in right now. I, rec I recommend a very great website called Pure Mac. They offer OS 9 updates, different software, old, outdated Mac abandonware software, games. Easy to download too, not like annoying and like SIT files that are unreadable and, you know, and it's easy to access with older Macs because you know, it's basic HTML. It's been around since 96, I believe. So this is my first G3 ever. I had another one, but when it came, it was all shattered in the, bo in the box. You know, I'm salvaging it. It's right there. That's my conclusion. Due to my Lombard's mysterious hard drive problem, I typically boot it off of a Mac OS 8 install disk, not compatible with the Lombard, and theoretically, it can boot off of any CD. I've used it with a blank Philips CD.